Hi, I'm Luke Sliz, and I work with Michigan Language Assessment as an assessment developer. I previously worked as an ESL and EFL teacher, and in this video, I'm going to share some tips that teachers can use to prepare their students for the listening section of MET Go. The MET Go listening section has five different task types, and almost any type of listening practice will help develop relevant skills. But here are some specific suggestions. Our first tip is training to listen for specific information. This is a really simple exercise for developing listening, and it can be done in class or by sharing your screen while teaching online. For this activity, you'll need some sort of audio recording. It could be a recording of someone reading from a textbook, a podcast, a video, or even better, a song. Play the video or the audio for the students and ask them to listen and write down certain word types that they hear. For example, food types in a recipe video, words related to stationery in a recording from school, um, maybe likes and dislikes that are expressed in a podcast, or to do something even simpler, the colors or the days of the week that are mentioned in a song. You can scale this up depending on the level of the class or make it more accessible by providing students a word bank and asking them to order or circle the words as they hear them. A word bank can reduce the cognitive load and allow students to hone in on the listening process. But if you want to keep them on their toes, you could also include a few words in the bank that don't appear in the audio. When giving feedback at the end of the activity, you could show the recording transcript or song lyrics to your class to clearly highlight where the words were spoken and how they sounded. This could also be done online by sharing your screen with your students. Our second tip is listening to stories and conversations. In this activity, students will create dialogues or monologues and then act them out in front of the class. First, you'll want to generate as many situations as you can, with your students' help if possible. Write those situations down on a whiteboard, either a real one in class or a virtual one if you're teaching online. Review the situations as a class, then pair each of your students and ask each pair to pick one situation each. Then give the students at least 15 minutes to create dialogues that could happen in those situations. Give them another 10 minutes after that so they can write comprehension questions about their conversations that they can ask the rest of the class. If students are learning online, they could still write dialogues in pairs using video conferencing software breakout rooms, or they could just write monologues individually. After writing is complete, students can act out their dialogues or monologues for the rest of the class. If you're in an online teaching situation, students can record themselves at home with the help of a family member, and then you can play the recordings for the rest of the class if acting them out live just isn't possible. If you're using a video conferencing software that allows it, students could even add a background image to their recordings to give their situations more context. Before the students listen to their each dialogue or monologue, the teacher can dictate the students' questions that they wrote beforehand to the whole class. This way, the audience of students will have a listening exercise to focus on when watching their classmates, and they'll know what information they should be listening for. Our final tip is about listening for detail. This activity is a drawing dictation. This can be done in a classroom or online, and it could be completed in pairs or as an entire class with the teacher leading. If working as an entire class, one person, either the teacher or a student, first chooses and describes a picture to everyone else. It could be a picture from anywhere, even one that they took themselves on their phone. Without seeing the picture, the rest of the students listen carefully and draw what they hear, using either paper if they're learning in person, or if they're learning online, a free virtual whiteboard program to make it easier to share their screen and their drawing later. Before beginning this activity, be sure to review the vocabulary or grammatical structures that students will need to describe their pictures. For example, you could use this opportunity to practice certain themed vocabulary, like food, or certain grammar points, like there is and there are. Once the drawings are completed, students can compare their work, either in pairs or as an entire class. Once again, make sure students know some basic reporting language before doing this part of the activity. For example, I heard, he said, she said, or no, I didn't hear that, I heard. If necessary, leave the relevant vocabulary and phrases on the whiteboard or the wall so students can easily refer to them as they speak. Finally, after comparing the drawings, the speaker who initially described their picture can show it to the rest of the class. Everyone can then reflect on the differences between their drawings and the original picture. 
Use an example from the class if you want to give the students some speaking practice. Like, in my drawing, there are six apples, but in Juan's photo, there are seven. If you're teaching online, you can even share your screen and annotate the original image by circling and highlighting the things in it as you describe them. Also, if this activity is done online, don't forget to get everyone to hold up their drawings at the end so you can take a screenshot of everybody's work. These are just some examples of things you can do to prepare students for the MET Go listening section.